Good morning, folks. So what I'm doing this morning is I am brainstorming some video ideas before I head into work. I also have a call in about 15 minutes. I've been doing a lot of these quote unquote market research calls over the past week in the mornings before I go to work and also at night after I get back. It basically serves as a way for me to better understand my audience and learn more about people's goals as well as the pain points and biggest challenges that you face when it comes to achieving those goals. It's honestly been a pretty grueling week over the past few days. I feel like I'm basically working two jobs and you know, I was gonna clean my room before filming this video, but as you can see, my desk is an absolute mess and I'm not gonna try to pretend that like my room is spotless every day. This is just how it is. But I still felt like documenting this and filming a vlog today. About to hop into this call in one minute. So I want to give a quick update. Basically we had a no-show and this is actually the second no-show this morning. It's a little bit of a letdown, but at the same time, I think if you are building anything, whether it be a company or a YouTube channel, or even if you have a goal that you're trying to work towards, maybe you're trying to start a club on campus or something like that, there will always be these kinds of small setbacks because at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with you necessarily, but it's more of a reflection on the other people. And so people won't necessarily commit to everything. You as the founder will always be the most committed and that's okay. I think if you recognize early on that a natural part of the journey towards success is running into these setbacks and these failures and you view them as more of a necessary part of the process as opposed to the things that are holding you back from success, then you'll be in a much better mind space when it comes to overcoming the obstacles that come your way be it whether you are trying to get a job at an elite consulting firm or if you're trying to start your own business, start a YouTube channel, do well in school, etc. Doesn't matter. I'm not gonna lie, I've been feeling pretty overwhelmed this past week just because of the sheer number of things that I have on my mind right now. As many of you know, I obviously work my day job here at Google, but in addition to that, I'm running this YouTube channel and there's a couple other things on the side that I'm trying to get up and running at this moment. And so it's funny because when I left my consulting job, I went from working like 70 hour weeks to 40 to 50 hour weeks here at Google, but it feels like I've managed to somehow fill up all that extra time in my day with other things. And so I feel like I'm just as busy as I was before. Granted, I'm working on different things and don't get me wrong, I would much rather be working on content than staying late in the company office, for example. But something that I've also always struggled with is taking a break. And I think some of you might relate to this if you're someone who is really ambitious and you have really lofty goals and you want to get the most out of your life, it can sometimes feel like you're doing something wrong if you're taking a break and you're not working. Over the years, I've realized that that mentality is a fast track to getting burnt out. And I've made a conscious effort to try and take more breaks, but I'm definitely not perfect with it. And right now is one of those moments where I'm feeling like I may have bitten off more than I can chew. And it feels like there's a million different things that need my attention or a million different people that are asking me for something or want my time or that I need to talk to for something at work. And sometimes I get questions from folks who ask me 
What's it like running a YouTube channel as sort of a side hustle in addition to working your day job? Anyone who has ever tried to make content while working a regular full-time job will understand this, but basically it feels like I'm working two full-time jobs. When I'm not at my day job, when I'm not in the office here at Google, I am thinking about content, I am planning content, I am filming content, I am editing content, and I am posting content. And so basically all of my weeknights and all of my weekends are spent making these videos and planning for future videos. And don't get me wrong, I love doing what I do. And I feel so grateful that there are now like 15,000 of you who like and appreciate my content. Thank you so much for that. But I just wanna be truthful about it because I think sometimes being like a content creator is glamorized by social media. But in reality, it is probably one of the toughest things that you can possibly take up because at the very early stages, you're basically getting rejections left and right, AKA people don't wanna look at your content. You're getting very low view counts you're pouring inordinate amounts of time and hours into these videos, but not necessarily getting any sort of reward. But I think what's really motivated me to continue, despite all of the challenges and despite how much time it takes, is that it's really enjoyable to see the progress that you're making. And like developing any sort of skill, and similar to even the job hunt, for example, I think it's important to take all of the setbacks and the failures in stride and to appreciate the fact that each of those failures or those setbacks is, yes, very disappointing and it's okay to be disappointed, but how we react to those setbacks is really what makes all the difference. Basically, we have about 30 minutes, so I'll get straight to the point. The purpose of today's call is... All right, so something else that I've been doing more recently is writing down my notes on a notebook. And this is something that I previously did not do when I was at my previous jobs in consulting and investment banking. I used to only take notes on my laptop, but since starting at Google, I decided, hey, why not? I've heard good things about writing things down on paper, and also my manager at work does the same. And one of the big benefits that I've found is that it helps me to really retain the information in meetings a lot better because when you're writing things down on paper, you're forced to slow down a little bit and you're really forced to understand what you're hearing and then translate it onto paper, which takes more mental effort than if you were just typing things on a Word doc on your laptop. And so although it is a little bit more effort, I do find that it really helps because I am in a lot of meetings nowadays. And so writing things down in a notebook not only helps me to remember what is being said in the meeting afterwards, but also forces me to better understand the content that I'm putting on paper. So I just grabbed some lunch. It's a good time to talk about some of the differences that I've noticed between consulting and strategy and ops, which is what I'm currently in. Having worked in both of these fields, I would say that there's a lot of differences between the two roles, but one of the biggest differences is definitely the fact that now, instead of just developing the strategy for a company, you're actually a part of that company. And so even after you've developed the strategy, you first have to get approval from all the right people at that company and get all of their sign off. And then you have to work on how do we actually execute this strategy and how do we measure the progress of this new plan to make sure that it's progressing as it should and also that it's having the kind of impact that we expected it to. This is actually much more difficult in practice than in theory. Getting alignment on a new strategy or a new initiative at a really large company is incredibly, incredibly difficult. And it's not necessarily a bad thing that things get done slowly. I think part of it also has to do with the fact that there's a lot more risk involved because you know, if the strategy is bad, then who suffers? Well, the company suffers and ultimately the employees of the company who are also shareholders of the business are gonna bear that risk. But coming from consulting, I am used to, to getting things done really quickly. And so for example, like something that in consulting I could get done in a day might take a week because of all the different people that I need to go to or the different processes that have to happen before I get sign off on something. 
And so while there is higher risk because now you have a track record, it's also a little bit more rewarding to be able to stick to one thing for a much longer period of time, as opposed to jumping around different projects like you would in consulting. Here, because you're focused on the business and that's the only business that you're working with, you get to see long-term how the strategy actually pans out, understand the business much more intimately than an advisor that only came in for a couple months and make relationships with the key stakeholders at the company, whether it be product managers or engineers or data scientists or salespeople. And to me, that's really cool because I feel like it's accelerated my learning about the business as well. I don't know if this shot is good or not, but I basically came outside to sit on the terrace for a little bit because it's absolutely freezing inside of the office. The AC is really, really strong, and so it makes me really appreciate that there's an outdoor section in the office where you can just sit outside and just enjoy the sun on your back. I feel like I also really need to enjoy the warm summer days because before you know it, it's going to be fall and then it's going to be winter and so I'm just really enjoying these small moments where I can just sit outside and really enjoy the nice warm sun on my face and on my back and it just really helps with my mood as well. All right, so I'm about to leave the office right now because I have to get dinner with one of my friends tonight. And honestly, it's a little bit unfortunate. I didn't have the chance to film anything on the whiteboard today, even though I was planning to because it was just such a hectic day. And I actually have to log back on probably later tonight because I just got out of a meeting with a VP at like 4.30 and he asked me to put something together for him to review on Sunday. And so I have a little bit more work to do tonight, but it shouldn't be too bad. If I'm being honest, my brain feels absolutely fried right now because I was basically in meetings the entire afternoon. And even though I'm not speaking in all these meetings, it's just mentally taxing to have to sit in and listen actively and respond to any questions in these meetings. And the thing with meetings is they're just such a huge time suck and you can't really do work while you're in them. Sometimes when you have two meetings that are not back to back, but there's only like half an hour in between, it's kind of hard to get in the zone and actually do good work, but it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> 